So, hi, um, welcome everybody. I'm Christian McNeil, based in Glasgow, and um, oh, I'm just going to change this to speaker view. Yeah, and I'm really delighted to be back once again with my good friend and colleague Amanda O'Shea, who is based in Spain, um, and we're going to be talking tonight um, about understanding habits and we both have our own um, take and experience and um, in, in that field in various different ways um, and so it would be lovely to hear from you about what you would like to hear from the call um, but just while you're settling into that or thinking about that I'm going to hand it over to Amanda and, um, you know, perhaps you would just like to say a word or two about yourself, Amanda. Yeah, I'd love to, Christian. So hello, everybody. Good evening. And um, mm -hmm. it's nice to have a couple of um, a couple of faces that I don't know. So Kathleen and Birdie, it's really nice to, to connect with you guys. And Kathleen's husband, I don't know. I don't know his name. But Ka Kathleen, uh, what's your husband's name? Uh, his name's Francis. Hi, Francis. Hi. Hello. Hi. Okay. Hello, Francis. So yeah, lovely, lovely to, to meet you all. Um, yeah, I live in Spain, as Christian said, but I'm originally from West London. I've been living here for 12 years now. And I've been doing a lot of exploring into habits recently because for the last 18 months, I've been working full time at a recovery center here in Spain, uh, a high-end recovery center called Step One Recovery, where we also have um, the three principles on the program, which is really, really exciting, and it's, uh, that's really great. So we are a holistic, a holistic addiction and recovery center. So looking forward to explaining about, or not explaining, but just exploring things that I've got to see much more clearly as well over the last 18 months. Um, and also talk about you know, well, all aspects of habits, really, because, you know, there's not just bad habits, <laughs> there's healthy habits. And it's kind of nice for us to remind ourselves sometime about the healthy habits that we have created and, uh, and how, you know, how, we can, how we can be more creative with those as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, I'd like to touch on that at some point in our little mini series. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, cool. Th thanks, Amanda. Lovely. And it'd be lovely just to hear a little bit um, from each of you. I mean, even if it's just hello, you don't need to say anything more than you want to. But it is, it is really nice to get a sense of who, who's on the call. And you can come in in any order that you like. And, uh, Francis. Francis. Hi, Francis. One of the things that I'm really connecting to already is for um, probably about 12, 12 years, I worked with uh, teenagers who had substance abuse problems. And so I'm feeling a connection around, you know, the idea of habits and how they can really become destructive when it becomes an abuse. So. I'm interested in that. I'm now working as a coach um, to take people away from what's familiar so that they can transform their lives. And I do that by travel. I basically take people out of the country and help them to have an experience that opens them up to you know things that they may not notice when they stay at home. Like getting away from habits is a part of that. So. I don't know, I just have a lot of ways that I'm interested in what we're going to do today. So I'm glad to be here. And I'll jump Great. in so I'll have our speaker off mute. Um, my name is Kathy Conrad and I uh, just retired after 38 years, um, as well, after 15 years as a child and family therapist um, and have started a coach business and doing Jamie Smart's um, Clarity Coach training. Uh, oh, great. So that's how I got acquainted with you guys. So I'll leave it at that. Right. Oh, great. Welcome. Lovely. Thank you. Birdie, are you about to come in? Yes, I can. Um, I'm a coach and I'm also mentoring at the moment on Jamie Smart's Clarity Coach Training. 
Um, I work with a few private clients and um, I did think of working with addiction and then I got busy with my normal clients so I didn't go that route in the end. Um, but it's funny because a couple of my clients have got addictions. One of them is the chocolate addiction um, or a chocolate habit and he uses it because he gets terribly, terribly stressed. So um, that's just an interesting one for me. And we're still exploring that one at the moment. So, yeah. So, yeah, and I've had good habits and bad habits. I used to smoke a long time ago and I have the odd drink, but I don't really drink that much. Only with a meal, maybe occasionally. Um, oh, chocolate might be a little bit of a habit now and again. <laughs> but other than that, nothing too serious, I don't think. So, yeah. But really pleased to be here and really interesting to see what you have to say, really. So, yeah, curious. So, oh, well, cool. Thank you. Good. <laughs> Hello, Martin. Welcome. Hi, Amanda. Great to see you. Yeah, lovely oh. to see you. That's been a, a little blast from the past there. Yeah, lo lovely to see you. Hola. <laughs> We're just uh, introducing ourselves, Martin, if you wanted, you know, to say anything. Otherwise, just it's good to have you here. Oh, well, thank you. Um, well, I'm a school teacher um, and uh, I've just, I've come on to see if I can pick up any sort of hints and tips about uh, habits when I work with the kids, um, if I do any coaching sessions. Um, but also um, anything that might uh, uh, you know any any of my own habits of thought which I'm uh, not seeing yet. Uh, but I have to sort of uh, maybe see something there in myself that uh, I can see differently. Um, so out of interest, really, and, uh, and to be with you again, Amanda. Oh, bless you. Know. Oh, bless you. Lovely, lovely to have you here. Martin, you came on a little bit late. It's just to say we are recording this. Um, uh, you know, everyone who was on before was okay with that. And, and if anything that people are not comfortable comes out, then, you know, we'll, we'll give you, we'll, we'll raise that again at the end. But there are one or two people who can't make the call but are keen to watch the recording. So I hope you're okay with that. Absolutely, Christina. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And... Last but not least. Hi guys, I'm Regini. Um, I'm currently a client where Amanda works. I was exposed to the three principles last year, but I guess this is for me to deepen my uh, understanding of the three principles. Great to have you here. Thank you. Mm, good to have you here, Reg. So, um, Christian, I just wanted to share that I've just literally just got back from the Viva event, mm -hmm. which is a, a three-day event that's held here in Spain. So I've just had the pleasure of hanging out with about a hundred really beautiful people, including um, Judy Sedgman and Jack Pransky and Gabriella Mondonado and Ian Watson and... Oh, so, so many people, but they tend to be a few of the bigger names that you, you know, most people have probably, probably heard of. And I, I had the, um, I have the, had the privilege of speaking at the conference and I, um, I did a subject on habits, addictions and recovery Ooh. along with, uh, yeah, a, a very funny man called Damien Mark Smith. I don't know if any of you are familiar with Damien. Damien yeah, and I go right. We came into this work at the same time. I think the same week. Oh, we, <laughs> oh really? Isn't it lovely the connections? You know, I love that when you turn up to places and then you know people are appearing sort of you know years later down the line. But um, Damien was great, and he was great fun to have at the event because he did his stand-up comedy. I don't know if any of you have heard him doing his three principal comedy sketch but it was hilarious and actually there are some photos that we've just posted on the serendipity experience facebook page showing like all the laughter that we had there and it was uh yeah it was it was really really good so i'm very i feel very full of that wonderful feeling that we point to you know the love and the joy and the connection and um and isn't it marvelous that um it's it's always a gift to get to some to a live event or something like that but isn't it lovely that we can connect 
like this from all over the world, you know, and, and, and that feeling again, I don't know, I, I can feel it, you know, I can't stop smiling. <laughs> because you just get that full feeling, don't you, you know, and we laughed and we cried and all those things that happen in those, those um, I think just being even opened up and reminded, reminded of who we truly are, you know, our, our true nature, behind our habits and behind our addictions and behind all of those things that us human beings um, create, knowingly or unknowingly, you know, willingly or unwillingly. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a lovely way of, of thinking about it, Amanda. And I, I, I was in a yoga class before I came here, and and um, and I was I was just sort of kind of reflecting on what, what might come up in the call. But I was I was thinking I sometimes think I was just about the most outside in person <laughs> there could be, um, and I have had all sorts of habits that were quite troubling at different times in, in my life, but um, not really for a lot quite a long time now but it was it, it was exactly that i i didn't all of those habits were responses they were solutions to just very muddled thinking a big misunderstanding and i was i had forgotten um, who who I am of what what's behind that I, I you know I'd lost touch with that and I was really only paying attention to the you know the pain and the discomfort I was in um, uh, and thinking that that pain and that discomfort was telling me something significant about who I was my value as a human being or um, what was happening in my life, what was going to happen in my life, and, and thinking that there was something wrong with feeling pain or discomfort. And, and therefore, I mean, and this was all happening, even this was all happening below the level of conscious awareness. It wasn't deliberate. I wasn't thinking, oh, I'm in a lot of pain just now, I'll take a drink. But, you know, that's, when I look back, that's what was going on. And, and it seemed like when I took a drink or when I, when, when I smoked, that somehow that was relieving discomfort. And really today how I see it is that when I picked up the drink or um, took a cigarette or, you know, whatever, I, I had an eating disorder. I mean, I've got the whole, you know, <laughs> the whole, a full house of um, <laughs> habits and addictions or have had. But I, today what I see happened was, and again, this, this happened automatically without any awareness. It was like I allowed the system to stop creating pain or the, the system had permission to stop creating pain. And the evidence for that, uh, um, I would say, and, and I see this when, with anybody that I work with, as well as the memories of my own past, is as soon as the decision was made to, you know, go and buy the packet of fags or um, um, go to the pub and have a drink, I began to feel better before the substance was in my body. Because I was now, oh, you, you know, um, the whole kind of crazy thought system the whole speeded up thought system of i need this in order to feel better was allowed it, it, it was it was it was given permission to stop for a minute and so that natural um feeling that natural wholeness that that that, that we all are that natural wisdom fun um creativity just came to the fore and um but it was many years until I would know that, until I, until I stumbled across this understanding. And, and because I didn't see the true connection, I, kept, I, I, would, be, I would connect those things, um, those good feelings with the, the activity or the substance or whatever. And I would do more and more and more of that because it's human nature for us to go up and down and in and out of our, our well-being. But I, every time I went out of it, I thought there was something wrong. So I don't, I don't know if that's making, is that making sense to, to, to people when, when I, when I put it like that? Does anyone sort of um, see it that way or see it a different way? Or maybe you've got a different thought on it, Amanda. I would really love to um, invite everybody who's on the call to just share 
if they can, in, in a few words, what is a habit? What does that word even mean? Like, what does it even mean to you? Go ahead and start since nobody's jumping in. Um, to me, a habit, when I have a habit, it's something that I do as a routine without really much thinking about it. I get up in the morning and I take my vitamins and I put on my tea and, and, and those things I've put into a, a routine to help me, but at the same time, they become a habit. And so I have bedtime routines, I have morning routines, I have some routines that support me and some that don't support me at all. Mm. Mm. Me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> what does the word habit mean to anybody else? Well, I think for me, it's a more of an acquired behavioral pattern that you, know, you keep on doing it until it becomes normal. So my behavior, you know, something that I've picked up just becomes normality. Mm. Mm. Um, my experience with travel, <clears throat> I'm also very aware of, you know, the large number of habits that I inherited from my own culture and that I didn't even have to um, um, grow up. I, I I took those on and became identified um, at such a young age. Mm. That's that's a great point. I think that's a, a wonderful point that um, we don't even know what our, our, our thinking is, what our, what our habit is, until, often until something um, confronts us or something, something new um, appears or, uh, um, and it, and it is in sort of contrast to, to what we believe or, or what we do and it just shows up our thinking around that for, perhaps for the first time perhaps it's the first time that we become consciously aware of it mm. what does the word habits mean to you um christian in in maybe in in comparison to the word addictions do you have a kind of do you have anything that springs to your mind you know it's a funny thing because i am a person who has remarkably few habits <laughs> do you know what I mean I don't I'm not um I, I, and I've, I, I have as I've got older there are some things like I have a cup of coffee in the morning but it, it took me a long time even to, to 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 clean my teeth at the same time every night you know I was very unpredictable in it but mm. um I think it, it yeah a, a habit is a behavior I'm doing without thinking Mm. I got I got really curious with I got really curious with that question. And has anybody else got anything? Has anybody else got anything that's springing to mind of what the word habit sort of means to them? <clears throat> I think on one aspect, there's something about habit that there's something you shouldn't be doing. Isn't it funny how our mind <laughs> jumps to the unhealthy habits? Like, isn't that really interesting? Yeah. Yeah, you know, like all of yeah. us, like naturally, we talk about habits and addictions, and and it kind of, you know, I mean, ha that's what I think. The thing about habits is, it, is it's a bit softer, right? Like yeah. if we were talking about addictions, mm. you know. And so I got curious, and I went on one of those websites, which is something like I don't know, what's what's the difference dot com. Or have any of you guys ever? Have you are you aware of that? But this was the same, same kind of things kept, um, the, the same kind of things kept, kept coming up really. I was just going to see if I had it here and I was going to read it to you, if that was okay. Mm. Of, of what, you know, what, of, uh, of what Wikipedia says or of, you know, what, uh, what, what, what's, the, what's the difference, if you like, you know? What's the difference? So it seems to be that it was compulsion, trauma, avoiding emotional pain, and the behaviors around these actions is what differentiates addiction from habit. And of course, that's just somebody's opinion, isn't it? 
somebody's opinion, mm. you know. And it's really funny because we went to, I was looking through these, so what's the difference, you know, what's the difference? Or, or what is appearing to be the difference? Or what is the common understanding? And everything that I read was different. And as I would read through a couple of these things, I was like, oh yeah, that, that makes sense to me. And then I would read something else. I was like, oh no, that doesn't make sense to me. Mm. Right. That, that doesn't make sense to me. But what did make sense to me was that it seems to be that there are healthy habits and unhealthy habits, whereas addictions, addiction seems a little bit stronger. And addictions seems to be that it's sort of gone beyond maybe beyond a con, you know, our control, hmm. apparent hmm. control, yeah? Or it has, it has um, worked its way into something that's not really serving us very well. Can it, does that make sense? Hmm. Does, does, does that make, make, make sense? I don't know, does anybody, can anybody think of any sort of, of good habits that you have? Hmm. Well, I, I was just thinking then of um, and habits I knew nothing about. <laughs> and this is quite funny because I was watching my little granddaughter one day and she pulled all these funny faces. <laughs> and I thought, where does she get that habit from? It's not her dad. It's not her mum. And then I was home one day and I went and looked in the mirror for something and I was pulling those faces. <laughs> and I thought, oh no, she's, you know, she gained this habit from me. Mm. And that was really weird. <laughs> so oh. it's totally unknown. I didn't know I had that habit. Yeah. She probably doesn't either. <laughs> yeah. It's quite cute, isn't it? Yeah. You know, some habits are cute cuter than others you know? yeah yeah definitely <laughs> it so does you... seem to me amanda that you're right on the money i mean that's my definition of addiction is fairly simple it's that loss of control yeah um that would di differentiate well I don't know. I've never. I have, now that I do have a teeth cleaning habit, I haven't tried to control it. If, if you know what I mean. But it is something about that loss of control, despite adverse consequences. Is for me it's something around that that would be the definition of addiction, mm. or the sense of and, and the loss of control is just the sense of that. Yes. Do you guys hear us? Oh yes. No. Now no. we do. Now we do. Caroline, just now we can hear you. Would you like to say something? Or in, would you like to say something or introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Caroline. <laughs> and this is my new friend, Emma. Hi. Hi. Emma. Hello, Emma. Hello. All the way from Canada. Mm. Yeah, but um, just um, what, I, what uh, I was thinking about was that I had a friend, and maybe I've told you that, Amanda, but I had... Uh, really been shocked by that. Her dad was an alcoholic and uh, he would um, take her perfume to drink her perfume, mm. you know, when he was, um, you know, being weaned. And uh, that really was uh, quite striking to me that you mm -hmm. can go as far as that, you know. Uh, so, so that is proper addiction, huh? proper mm. addiction proper loss of control mm. so. there's something about that isn't there you know what i mean working in the the recovery center that we work in we have to do a bag check as people come in and we remove things like mouthwash that's got alcohol mm. in and we can't have we can't have hand sanitizer around the place and yes these we wouldn't even you know we wouldn't even think about and, yeah. and get your head around that the brain is mm. is absolutely convinced and you know it's got itself into a cycle that it, it has an, a need and a must and a you know and it's it's really is is sort of caught in that cycle is really um is mind-blowing to people that 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 would never occur to you know that kind of thought has never ever come into your um your awareness mm, mm, yeah. yes, yes. I agree. yeah I agree. so there is this so we thought we would sort of keep it. It's interesting. So we're very open to talk about addiction. I just, that, I think that's the reason I wanted to open it up. We just thought that habits is a little bit lighter. Yes. You know, and, and sometimes inviting people to calls yes. like 
yeah. as well. It's um, addiction mm. can be a bit heavy and a bit strong. Yeah. People, yeah. people are like, oh, well, I don't have any addictions. Because that would, you know, even, even if they do, that mm. would be kind of defining themselves, you know, as, as an addict or as out, mm. somebody who's out of control. Or So the thing with habits is it's really interesting. Like, I love what Birdie said. Um, just bringing back that, bringing the awareness to is something a healthy habit or an unhealthy habit? Because mm -hmm. I don't always notice my healthy habits either. Mm. And that's because I just get on with them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's because I don't have so much thinking about them. It's a little bit like when we're happy and joyful and hanging out at those sort of higher levels of consciousness, we're just being, right? We're not examining, we're not an analyzing. We're not so aware because we've got a good feeling and, and, and we just get on with it and, and, and that's cool. But isn't it interesting when we have um, something that doesn't serve us well, A, how do we know that anyway? Well, normally we kind of feel it, doesn't feel so good. Mm. It doesn't feel so good when we're, thinking about it doesn't feel so good when we're doing it or it doesn't feel so good afterwards so again that beautiful gift of feelings you know being an expression of thought lets us know where we're where we're at if that makes sense where 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 we're at when we're when we're sort of carrying out these thoughts into you know bringing these thoughts alive by that lovely gift of consciousness into into reality as 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 we call it or as we see it does that make sense does that make sense to to you guys on on the call because there's something about there's something about when we just do get on with something a bit like being happy we don't you know if we if we're having having a good time we don't we don't keep commenting on wow, how happy we are right now, and isn't that interesting? And why do you think that is? Why do you think we're so happy right now? We don't do that. We're just happy, enjoying the music, or enjoying the view, or enjoying the movie. It's only when we don't feel so good that we start to look to the outside for why that should be, or why that could be. And for me, there's a similar thing that happens um when we start when we have this awareness when we have this awareness about habits about when something it's like there's this line that gets crossed right like we do something and maybe we don't do it that often and then we start to do it more often and it doesn't serve us well hmm. so you know like it's okay would somebody talked about the you know, chocoholic, and, and that's me too, you know, me too. I don't know whether I crave the saturated fat or whether I, whether I crave the chocolate or whatever, but sometimes, like, nothing hits the spot, right? Nothing hits the spot. So I, I've got this belief, I don't think I'm a chocoholic because when I, when I allow myself to have as much chocolate as I like, like dark chocolate, I can't eat that, you know, I don't eat that much. I'm not, I'm not getting that, that thing that I think believe I'm looking for so so you know I get to see now that I'm aware of that I get to see where you know I get I get curious with it like right what what's really going on why do I think I need chocolate right now oh yeah it's because I'm I'm because I'm meant to be doing my paperwork oh yeah mm. it's because I'm meant to be doing something else that I don't really want to be doing mm. and suddenly I get this like I need something that this illusion that I need energy or something to, you know, to help me. But I'm aware of it. And that's really helpful. Right? That's really helpful. If I can catch that in time, I can, I can, you know, I can sometimes do something about it. Sometimes I can't. Sometimes I can't. It just depends where my thinking's at. Depends whether I catch myself quick enough. One of the insights I had, which you just reminded me of there, Amanda, is just realising that, because I can get exactly the same thing. I know I'm not hungry. You know, I've finished a meal. I'm not hungry. And, and I can 
get that sort of a cra- I'm, I'm, I'm craving is putting it too strong a desire for something mm. but I've mm. come to see that there's a sense of sort of wanting within me and uh, you know a sort of needing a, a, a looking in, in me and, and I latch it on to maybe something like sweets or cake or whatever but I've come to see that the sweets and the cake never deal with the feeling of wanting I didn't used to notice that they didn't because it, it, it used to be that I would take them and then I'd feel bad that I'd taken them and, you know, I'd have a new thing to, 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 uh, that, that I'd be, uh, you know, have some thinking about. But I, it's just as simple as now I've, I've noticed that it doesn't, wherever that feeling comes from, which of course is thought, wherever that feeling of wanting or desiring comes from, it's never met by taking you, you know taking the thing and sometimes i still take it i don't mean that i've ma- miraculously um uh stopped that altogether but it's um it's not that that wanting is is not a lack of chocolate it doesn't come from a lack of chocolate it comes from the operation of um you know, just thought pop, popping up in me and, and there's nothing on unusual about that there's just nothing that's not normal but it's just it's just recently, it's everybody so. friends. Hmm? yeah sorry did you say something amanda oh i think amanda might be frozen hello, hello. oh i think you were possibly frozen for a moment amanda what i i, I think amanda sorry. I, I think you were just maybe you were maybe frozen for a moment. It was me. Okay, I'm back anyway. You're all back on. You're all back on my screen. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, how is is this um, uh, is this familiar to other people? It'd be interesting to know what how you, how you, how you um, if this is sparking anything for you or what your experience is. I have an experience of that we talk about habits like things are consistent or the same and what I realized is that when I am more aware things don't always taste the same that on one occasion I'm aware it's like I don't even like this why am I doing this and then on another occasion I could bring my awareness to it and it's like, yeah, a little bit of that would be really nice tonight. Let's go for it. So I think that it's even a misunderstanding to think that there's a consistency between how things taste. Something else is like changing the taste or the way that I experience it when I'm aware. And sometimes it's so different that it just feels like why on earth am I even, you know, drinking this wine? I don't like wine. It doesn't taste good to me. And then the next time, a little bit of wine is great. Mm. That's, it's, isn't that interesting? <laughs> you know, not only to, like, we don't know how, what, how something tastes to anybody else. We'll never know that. We, we, we can eat from the same dish. And we're like, oh, isn't this lovely? And the other person's like, yeah, it's really lovely. And we don't know what they're tasting, you know. And we don't even know what we're tasting, like you say, from one day to the next. Yeah. And we crave things, that like we have something and we, we enjoy it so much. That's, that reminds me of what just happened. We went for dinner two nights ago to a Greek restaurant. We don't have many Greek restaurants in Spain. And I had that... You know, you get that feeling of like, oh, yumminess, and it was so yummy, and you want it again. And then I took an, another crowd of people there the next day at lunchtime, and they all were going, oh, this is lovely. And I didn't have the loveliness, <laughs> because it's like, you know, I'd had that the night before, and it's just funny where we go. And so I had pretty much the same meal, because I got this wonderful, like, hit from it. It felt like it came from, even that felt like it came from the food. Right, but it, it couldn't have done. It had to have come from my experience in the moment. Mm. Like that, that, you know, that, it blows my mind. It blows my mind that we can be talking about big, heavy substances when we talk about habits and addiction. 
like heroin or hard drugs or whatever. But actually it's the same when we talk about, you know, cheese on toast or like cup of tea. Mm. <laughs> yeah. We are mind blowing creatures. You, you said something earlier, Amanda, that I, I liked and um, it, it was about how we don't have thinking about our good habits. You know, we're just kind of getting on with them. And it seems to me that all of our problems as human beings are, come from overthinking, um, uh, whether that overthinking is visible or not. Um, and taking it seriously. And I had a wee example of this today. I was um, walking with a friend and we, we went past um, the house of someone I know who's, who's a very, very successful businessman. And she said to, to me, oh, he must have just been so lucky to, um, you know, to make all that money. And, and I said, no, I don't think so. I, I, I th because it seems to me, and I'm, you know, I probably know a bit, more, a bit more about his life story than she did. And it seemed to me that one of the reasons he was really successful in his business is that he just didn't have any thinking about it. He would see an opportunity, he would see what the solution was, and he would just do it. And, and his business is actually a very ordinary kind of um, process that, that has been phenomenally successful. And it, it seems it's almost the same with, with everything, because when you went on to talk about our bad habits is when we start to have judgment and fighting mm. them and, and our judgment on ourselves and a comparison mm. and you know, all of that stuff. And it's, it's like a, a spiral into a spiral of that obscures the, the well being that you were describing at the beginning of the, the call that, you know, that is always there. Mm. Each of us has this essence of, you know, wholeness, mental well-being, wisdom, light, light-heartedness, and it's always there. But our thinking can give us the impression that it's not. We can get caught up in that illusion of you know clouds and clouds and clouds of thought that obscure that. Mm. You see, that's where where um, I see that our habits are really at. You know, it's funny, isn't it? We we, we mention the word habits, and people start thinking, I know, cigarettes, alcohol, chocolate, whatever it might be. But actually, I'm more interested in these days in our habits of worrying, our, our habits of, of comparison, like you just said, our habits of, of um, criticizing, our habits of putting ourselves down, our habits of putting other people down, you know, those kind of things. I'm more interested in, in the habitual thought patterns that, that we start to sort of create or we're in without realizing. And I think, you know, when we, when we look at those, when we look behind the chocolate, or we look behind, behind the cigarette or behind the, the glasses of wine or whatever it is that we tend to sort of reach out out there we start to see those sort of those sort of thought patterns that that we have been we could have been in for a long long time or they could be really new right they could they could they could be really new i don't think it takes that long for us to form habits i, I read lots of things and i'm the 21 days always pops into my mind i don't know how true that is but, you know, I've, I've heard that many times that 21 days it takes to, to make or break a habit. I got into, I got into a little habit recently. Um, I was telling Rags about it today. Um, I don't really watch TV. And I haven't done that for years and years and years. And it doesn't, so, you know, it just, I always fall asleep. That's what happens. So I fall asleep and I never really watch anything. I'd rather read and I do other things. But recently I've got into um, Netflix. <clears throat> everybody was watching Netflix. Everybody had, you know, these series are appearing. 
And so I thought that might be a really good idea to just like help me relax, you know, because I'm quite busy and I have lots going on. I do a full time job. I've got a little private practice as well and two dogs and life, you know, my life's pretty busy. That's the way that I create it. So that'd be a good idea and I can relax. So I got into a habit of watching one when I went to bed. And I can't just watch one, apparently. So then I was watching two. And then before you know it, I'm in a habit of going to bed really late. Really late. So there's been this new series out. I don't know if it's on American TV or whether it will be, but it's just been on British TV and now it's on Netflix called The Bodyguard. I don't know if any of you guys saw it or watched it. Well, it, I don't know if it's, uh, I don't know if it's will be, but I, I, it will come on if any of you guys are aware. It will come on soon. And whilst I was at Viva, I thought, oh, that's really nice. And normally I go to, when I go to one of these events, I go to bed quite early and I read a book and I fall asleep and it's really nice. But I had been in this habit of watching something before I went to bed. And so suddenly it's like I was looking for that. And I brought my laptop with me and I thought, well, I'll just watch one. Right? I'll just watch, I'll just watch one. And then it was two o'clock in the morning and I was, the next night, well, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to do that again. And then come, I got into bed and I'm looking for it again because it felt like there was something missing. And that happened really quickly. You know, this is like, this is like just in a couple of weeks. And then they leave you on a cliffhanger. And because I don't have to wait a week, because normally you watch a TV series, right? So you, something's on every Sunday at nine o'clock and you watch that. Well, that's how it used to be. And then you wait a week and everybody's talking about it. And then, you know, everybody watches it again. But that, it was readily available to me now. It was readily available. I didn't have to wait. In fact, it doesn't even stop. It just rolls straight on, right? Like if you don't press stop, it rolls straight on. So, and then I was like, right, we're just, and this is what I do sometimes if I've got a chocolate craving going on. I was like, just watch all of them. Just watch all of them and get it over and done with. Right, and just get it over and done with. <laughs> and, so it was, you know, whatever it was, two o'clock, half past two, ridiculous, ridiculous for me, that's really ridiculously late. It doesn't serve me well. And in the moment, when I knew that that little voice was saying, you're gonna regret it in the morning, you said you're gonna get up early and go to yoga, and that other little voice is going, sod it, sod it, yeah? So this, go, this starts, you know you're gonna regret it, the little voice of wisdom, or the little angel, and the little devil, the little, you know, personal voice that seems to always like to lead me astray, mm -hmm. take me away from peace of mind and clarity and all that stuff that likes to have, you know, play and have, have much more fun. So I find myself and I'm, I'm back and, it, you know, I feel like I'm in a really good place these days and I understand what's going on. Even though I understand it, I still was in it. Just because we get an understanding of how it works, it doesn't mean we still, we still don't play within the dance, you know? And it felt exciting. It felt like that, um, that I was gonna, I don't know, that I was gonna gain something from watching, you know, watching this series. Exactly the same if I open a box. I can't, I'm not one of those people that can open a box of chocolates and have one a week or whatever. It doesn't work for me, it's gone. It's gone. But you know, the chocolates won't, they don't really kill me. You know, they won't kill me. They, they might put on a few pounds. You know, I might even, I could end up with something like diabetes or I could end up with, you know, something going on if I ate too much of something. But it's not going to, um, it's, not, it's not gonna really damage me as quickly as some other substances, for example. You know, like the like what we would call mind altering substances of like alcohol or drugs or prescription drugs. So we 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 seem to be more alert to those, don't we, Christian? You know, we they they seem to get our attention. These these substances that we're in habits of or addictions to. Yeah. Although I was just thinking, you know, a great example of separate realities because I love having a binge on Netflix <laughs> and I've noticed that it kind of comes like everything else. It comes in waves, you know, so I, 
I really, really enjoyed Ozark. <laughs> I just, and then I was over it. You know, I'd watched it all and I was over it. Mm-hmm. And um, so it's just, it's interesting, you know, just that, mm-hmm. um, how the same behavior um, in, in different people, we, we, we even have different thinking about that. Yeah. Yeah. I bet you watched yours earlier than me. Not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> there were some very late nights, but, you know. I do, and it's um, and it's interesting because I, I, you know, so you know, so for I mean, I, you know, I, you know, do the whole binge thing. So for a day or two, I'm watching it every opportunity. Then it's done, and I'm fine. Or, or sometimes I get bored with them. You know, yeah, having done a bit of that, I oh, had had enough of that. Mm. Um, but I have noticed more of that, just that variability. Sometimes I'm into it, sometimes I'm not. But also, and I, you know, I know we're not here to talk about Netflix, but, I, but it, it is also a place where I can have that spontaneous gratitude just come up because I think, you know, sometimes I think, wow, this, this, you know, this creative medium is the ultimate in our our in, in our time. You know, it's like. Um, uh, you know, it's just so the, the, the script, the acting, the photography, it's just phenomenal. So I can have that, that lovely um, sense of massive gratitude that you were describing of the Greek meal. Um, yeah, yeah. And I think that's a, that's a wonderful thing. That, that's a, 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 a wonderful thing that has kind of come to me since I've got into this understanding. I used to think gratitude was a thing that you worked on and, you know, sort of made a list about and, and, and tried to cultivate or compare to yourself to people who were worse off with you. And that never took me anywhere. But, mm. but that, you know, just that it, sort of bubbling up of immense gratitude is a, a wonderful feeling. Mm. There's a huge difference, isn't there, of being in gratitude and doing gratitude, you mm. know, like where it's a doing it's quite hard work, you know, it's more hard work. Like, oh, we don't really want to, so I don't really want to do it, but I, I, you know, I'm told I should be grateful. So, you yeah. know, let's sort of, you know, when, and if some people need that sort of, if that's a stepping stone and that they fall into, then they realize how nice that is. And then that, that's great. We've all got our own little paths, haven't we? That lead us in and lead us out of this place that we seem to be craving for, which is like peace. Hmm clarity so has anybody got any questions of, of what we've just sort of shared a little bit has anything just cropped up for anybody who's listening that we might all be able to i don't know explore a little together kathleen one of the one of the questions. kathleen kathleen is, is there any way you can put your volume up your voice is very low um let me see no, that volume up is up all the way. Okay. Or is, is the microphone blocked at all? Is there anything in front of the microphone? I'll I'll pull this over a little bit and have it closer to me. Yeah. Okay. That'd, That'd be great. Thank you. All right. Um, what I what you said about that most of the habits that we talk about, like chocolate and and you know Netflix and things like that, none of them are quite as deadly as some of the other ones can be for some people. Now, alcohol isn't necessarily deadly for anybody, but it seems to be, um, you know, that it, it surely can be deadly to some. Talking from, you know, experience within my own extended family, it can actually kill. And especially if combined with opiates. And so you combine some of those things in, in seeking that, and it literally can be deadly. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's my one thing is, yeah, habits, I I see them as habits. And yet at the same time, um, to just call them habits, I think diminishes how deadly they might be. Mm -hmm. So it's not really a question, it's just a a piece of of pondering that is is how do I, how can I reconcile some of that I had uh, I have an extended family member who literally died in a hotel room alone when his heart burst and the heart had kept growing and growing mm. and growing because of his alcoholism and um, and I had my my father quit uh, he checked himself into uh, rehab when he was when I was about ten um, because he had 
you know, it was breakfast and he was shaking so bad from, from feeling like he needed to have his alcohol that he literally dropped his coffee and he checked himself in that day. Thank heaven for me. But, but I see these in my family and my extended family as really severe uh, reactions. And I'd like to have some uh, conversation about that piece of it. But yes, sometimes it is very deadly. Mm. Yeah, it, I, I think you, you, you make a really powerful point, Kathleen, and, and you know, and me too, um, it, you know, I, that, that, because I, um, I, I've experienced more of that, that, ex, that, that kind of extreme end of it. And yet, I, I, I think that, I don't know what you think about this, but it occurs to me that it's, a, it's the same misunderstanding that's at play with the deadly addiction as with um you know the unnecessary mars bar every night it's that the, the, it's a, it's a, it's a misunderstanding about where discomfort has come from it's a, it's a misunderstanding about what discomfort means you know that that um that it means something that it needs to be dealt with it needs to be medicated that, that i i can't cope with it and it's a misunderstanding about what needs to happen in order for the discomfort to pass. And all of those misunderstandings are usually happening below the level of awareness. So the misunderstanding about what needs to happen um, in order for discomfort to pass, if you're an alcoholic, is you think you have to take a drink. Um, and I and and I don't know if you're asking the question. Maybe 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 you're not. But I I think what you know one of the 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 um, very kind of humbling um, facts for me is that that none of us have the power to get anybody else sober or to to change anybody else's habits. You know, all we can. But there is something powerful I think about sharing what we know. You know, sharing from the heart. Mm. Um, and, and sometimes people, you know, and, 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 and sharing the truth as we see it around, around that. Um, but, but that, that compulsion, uh, you know, I, I also have someone in my extended family at the, at the moment who's really, really kind of caught up in it has been hospitalized <clears throat> in the past. And I, I, there's just no knowing of, I mean, I have, he, he knows about my recovery story and, um, I, you know, I have, you, you know, given him information about, about resources and so on and, and um, made it clear that he's welcome to, to, to contact me or, or these at any time, but that, there's no way of knowing how, whether, he'll, whether he'll hear that or that have that, have that willingness. And, and I think that, that there's something about all, all we can do is, share what we know, share open heartedly and, 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 and then just respect the person to do what, you know, to live their life or not. As... Mm. I don't know what your, what your own thoughts about that are, Kathleen or, or Amanda. I mean, you, I mean, you, you work at the sharp end of this on a daily basis. Mm. I think there's, Kathleen, did you have anything, did you want to answer to that yourself? Um, not right now. I, it's just something that, like, it, mm. um, you had asked about comments or questions about mm. everything we had talked about. And we had talked about that habits is a softer way of, of discussing the same process. Um, and, and I, you know, I agree that it is softer. And I often talk about it as habits and um, and when, when I was working with young people who had, uh, who had been referred by the courts and things like that, I, I often referred to most habits and kind of related it to other habits. Um, so, so I, I recognize that now in, in the medical tradition, which is, um, you know, the system I just left. Um, if somebody, when, when we had to do crisis response, if somebody was uh, in the hospital and they were wanting to detox and they were wanting to um, uh, stop drinking, let's say, or stop, you know, go off of whatever they were on, 
um, particularly with the alcohol, the psychiatrists would always recommend don't stop cold turkey. If you want to cut it in half, do that. But going through the withdrawals could actually be deadly. Mm. So I don't know whether that was true or not, but you know, but that's the, the training that I had. And so I'm always more cautious when it comes to things that I've been trained, actually, even though I recognize how people can get into them and what it will be supportive in getting out of them. I also seem to recognize that there's some kind of a physiological response as well. So I, that's my thoughts. I mean, I do, you know, I, I do, I do also see, you know, that there is no denying you know, we're talking about sort of if we're talking about habits, whether that's overeating or undereating or over drinking or over whatever, you know, watching whether it's watching too much porn or spending too much money or you know, over shopping, whatever it is that seem to be the real common things. You know, these are the common things that keep show, keep showing up, or addiction to um, whether it be technology or gaming. You know, I mean, these things that so. So we, we're only getting to see what's on the outside, aren't we? That's what we see. You know? and, and what we're pointing to in the understanding is, is really what's, what's going on on the inside first. Yeah. So, so there gets to be a point where we can't, you know, we, normally when we're acting in behaviors that are not serving us well, like we are overdoing anything, yeah, beyond its, beyond its, um, its service. Yeah. So beyond its service, you know, there, there seems to be a point where, like, just like you say, physically, the body just can't cope anymore. Or, or, but also very cleverly, the body not just shows us, but it shows everybody else around us to the point where we can't hide it anymore. Right. So when somebody's got yellow in their eyes or they've got the shakes or the sweats or their skin breaks out or, you know, that it becomes very obvious, doesn't it? And I think that's part, you know, I, I think that's quite clever, really, because it's that it's sometimes it takes until then, till everybody, you know, till everybody, um, till everybody sort of takes notice, right? And but always, if we look back on that, it didn't just happen like that. There were signs and. And we ignored it and we hoped it was just a phase and we hoped it was just something we were going through and hoped it was something they were going to get over themselves until we realized like that they can't, that they're in it, that right? they're really in it. Now, the great thing I think about this understanding and maybe, you know, maybe just we're sort of just very, very briefly, just, I don't know how much people know what we're talking about here. We keep talking about this understanding, but it might be, might be helpful that we just in a, in the tiniest nutshell, just sort of wrap that up, is that the more that we, that we just look in this direction, the more A, it brings our own awareness to honesty, to, to really our, you know, seeing that, seeing that even our habits, if we're in them now, if they're not any sort of addiction, but they're a habit, that it doesn't define who we are, right? And even if when we are in addiction, that doesn't define who we truly are. But it also is really, really helpful if we've got people, friends, family, loved ones, colleagues, and we, we can see that they're, they're maybe in a place that doesn't serve, serve them very well. It's really helpful for us to, to understand how the human mind works and, and where, you know, how our thinking system works and where our feelings really, truly come from. Because when we get to see that, some a couple of things happen we, we just get to understand that we're all alive and that's a gift to wake up being alive actually you know whatever experience that day brings whether we're somebody in sobriety or whether we're somebody in you know sobriety of the mind or sobriety of substances or, or we're, we're in active consumption of something it's it's still an experience you know, it's still an experience and that's what we're pointing to a description of how how the human experience is created and then we get to understand that we you know we have this gift of thoughts and and, and this gift of thinking and we get to see that wow these thoughts just pop into our head that's kind of how it works we don't actually we weren't the ones that created them 
you know, we're the ones we, we're the ones that create something with them to turn them into a personal experience. But we get to understand a bit more about how the mechanics of the mind works. And that gives us a little bit of, oh, okay, you know, my thinking doesn't defy who I am. My thinking doesn't define who I truly am. We get a little bit, you know, that, that's helpful. And then we get to understand that, that we've got a gift to feel our thinking, right? That's all that's ever really happening. And so given the kind of thinking that somebody is having, their behavior makes perfect sense to me now. And, and, and so that's, that's helpful for me if I'm looking at myself, but it's really helpful for me as well if I'm looking out there with people I'm working with or with friends or loved ones. So if somebody's in the habit of worrying or somebody's in the habit of, of, um, of fit, you know, or addicted to fear at another extreme, or if somebody's in the habit of whatever, I start to understand where that's coming from. I get a deeper understanding the more I look in this direction. And the more that I understand how this works, something happens for me also that I kind of, if I can catch it, I think the key here is about slowing down because when I slow myself down, if I can, or if I can slow somebody else around me down, they get a chance as well to catch this creation in, in action before we really bring it alive. If, if, if I can have a tiny understanding that just because a thought pops into my head, it doesn't mean it's true. If, 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 if I've slowed down enough, there's, there seems to be like this time for me to catch that, which is like, oh, it's just a thought, right? If that means I don't have to eat the entire packet of biscuits because that little, that little thought says, you know, you're going to feel sick and, uh, you know, this thought says, eat the biscuits, eat the biscuits. And the other sort of voice of wisdom says, you know, that doesn't really make sense. If I can, ca if I can just catch that enough, sometimes that's enough for me to put them in the cupboard and, or to say to my daughter, please take those away because you know I'll eat a lot if they just sort of sat there on the table. That, that can be really, really, really helpful. However, what I've seen to be true is that unless the person, especially if we're talking about bad habits, unhealthy habits that have led into maybe an addiction, unless the person who is creating that habit really insightfully sees for themselves what's happening, wakes up to, to what's happening, then some of us might as well go and, you know, talk to the, the tree in the garden, really. Because if somebody is really, does not want to change or they're not ready to change, you know, it seems to be by trying to um, save somebody or rescue somebody or convert somebody or fix somebody, isn't really going isn't really going to be that helpful what appears to be more helpful is in my understanding knowing what i know to be true i see the innate wisdom i see the innate resilience i see the innate health inside of that person in a soft manner showing love being presence you know being present in the presence of love Staying in my own understanding that everything's okay and um, at some deeper level, it doesn't look like that. If the person in front of me is nicking a bottle of vodka, you know, to early, you know, first thing in the morning. But that, that I get to see a little bit like the serenity prayer. I get to see what I can change, you know, having the courage to change the things that I can, you know, you know, seeing the things that I can't, and 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 that's and that's makes it a much more helpful experience for the, for the people around me. I'm much more in service to others. Maybe there's something really obvious that I haven't seen rather than myself joining them and going into some sort of panic or fear or, br or bringing that, you know, bringing more fear to the table, for the situation. I don't know if that, if I've gone a bit off key or if that made sense to anybody. That was, that was great, uh, great, Amanda, and, and yeah, just I think that thing in a nutshell of that the recognition that who I am, who each of us is, and and who someone who's maybe you know really caught up in alcoholism or any kind of addictions, underneath that, that who they are is not up for grabs. That that essence cannot be extinguished, and and 
um, it seems to me the more we look to that and, and see that in, in, in another person, we're on the right track, we're on a, we're on a, a helpful track, we're on, mm. um, and, and come, it, it, the more we look in that direction, the more it comes to life, the less we take our thinking seriously. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. So now that we've had that little discussion, I'm aware of the time, Christian, and I don't know, you know, I'm aware that everyone's yep. busy and we've got things to do. And But I don't know if anybody had anything that's... It, 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 this is a three-part series. So that's what's really great is that we get to sow a few seeds, go away, have a little think, see what occurs the week and, and, and get to come back again next week if anybody wishes to join us. Um, but has anybody got anything burning on the end of their tongue or anything they feel that they want to ask or share? Um, <clears throat> Betty? Hi. Um, I'm aware from coaching clients, obviously, that they won't hear anything if their mind is spinning, right? So we need to slow the right down so that they can hear what we're saying to them. But if someone's in an alcohol um, haze say they are quite relaxed at that point so if you speak to them at that point in time would they hear anything or not or is the alcohol you know uh, a shield between you what well, one thing i'd say is that i've seen more people having insights in the um you know the depths <laughs> and drunkenness and despair mm. um than in you know than in a meditation room <laughs> to be perfectly honest yeah. real life changing yeah. moments of clarity yeah. it doesn't necessarily come you know it, it happens within and that's what happened to me i mean that, mm. that so i don't know that there's any general rule i think you know sometimes if we work in this field, we tend to think that you get more insights if you're, you know, sort of blissed out and mm. quiet minded. I don't think that's actually true. I think an insight can occur at any moment because it's not in our control. Yeah. It's coming yeah. from somewhere deeper than our ego. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's just a thought crossed my mind then and I thought, oh, I wonder. <laughs> Mm -hmm. but uh, yeah I get that too because it can happen anytime in the middle of a crisis or when you're nice and chilled or listening to mm -hmm. music or reading a book or driving the car or whatever yeah yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah back to wisdom yeah. isn't it it's back yes. to wisdom yes. you know yes yeah I, I certainly wouldn't spend hours speaking trying to teach the principles to somebody who's you know completely intoxicated oh, ditto ditto oh, no. <laughs> Uh, you know, in fact, I wouldn't even, that would be my, you know, because they don't even remember, you yeah. know, they don't remember the next day that, so that will be, you know, I'll have that conversation at a different place, but yeah, somebody that feel, is relaxed, having a couple of glasses of wine, then that's, if that's what it takes, you know, or because that's what they do, I wouldn't encourage that, you know, you sort of, but, but that's what but people do, then I think we know, don't you, you know yourself. If you're listening to yourself first, you know, you know whether this is um, you're in service or, or wasting both people's kind of time. Yeah, yeah, you can feel it really. So. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Bridie. I'm sorry, I'm calling you. I've got a friend called Bridie that was a slip of the oh. tongue, Birdie. Birdie. <laughs> Guys, I'm a conscious of the time and, and um, we had scheduled the call for an hour and I'm afraid I've got something else. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for, for, for joining us. If you do have more questions, you get in touch or post something on the Facebook group. And um, the plan is to, to, um, uh, to share the recording with some people who couldn't make the call. Are, are people comfortable with that or would anybody like it? Is anyone uncomfortable with that? Speak now. <laughs> Oh, forever. Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it looks like it's going to be shared, with our folks. And um, thank you so much for making the time tonight. And I hope we'll see you next week at the same time. Yeah. Amanda? That would be really nice. I think it's always the beginning, like of any little webinar series, you just get to know each other a little bit, right? Yeah. So I, I really look forward to next week because, um, and I'd love you, if whatever occurs during the week, to just jot something down. I don't know what your Facebook group is, is Christian. Do you have a Facebook it's group? Three Principles Conversations. This is the... Uh... 
three principles conversation. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, we'll. Um, or we'll, yours, Amanda. Yeah, I was just going to say the other thing was there's a the love and clarity group that um, you know going to post some things in there this week. So um, that would be also another if anybody was wants to have a look at the the serendipity experience or the love and clarity page, then uh, I'm going to post a few things in there on habits this week. Okay. So that would give you give you a bit of homework. Keep you yeah. <laughs> keep you going for the week so it's been absolutely lovely thank you so much to uh i can't believe how quickly that hour's gone <laughs>